So you join me now in the process of truing up the rear tyres. I thought I'd better get them ready as early as possible. So I've put those onto my hoodie. Now I'm using the wide tyres that are the soft tyres. Now I think they're 22 Shaw softness, so they say on the packet. Now these true up differently to the front tyres. The front tyres were much harder and they trued up really nice. But these tend to overheat and tend to marble up if you get them too hot. So there's a technique to truing these down. Now I'm just going to back that off a little bit and start my tyre truer. The technique to use is to slowly bring it in and then bring it back again so you're moving the tire against the drum and away from the drum to allow the tire to cool down and then it doesn't turn into marble so much and it doesn't chunk up so much so watch the technique a few moments later they're not too bad, there are still some tiny little marks in them or some little chunks taken out of them, but they're not too bad. So I'm going to keep going like that until I get them as small as I dare go. So now I've finished truing it down to the size that I wanted, I'm just going to polish up the surface and then I'll measure the size of it. So I'll show you how to polish up the surface. <laughs> going to take some kitchen roll, some lighter fluid, and I'm just going to polish them up. Like that. The kitchen roll is very slightly abrasive. The lighter fuel lubricates the tyre so that it doesn't overheat. And then you can just literally polish it up. Remember to polish the corners. Much, much, much later. Now you can still see that there are some chunks out of the tyre. Maybe I could do a better job if I did this again, but this is the first time I've done these. They're not bad. I think they'll work okay. Just got to clean some of these little bits of rubber off the edge. They should just brush off. And then hopefully those tyres will be ready to run. You might see I've assembled the front axle and you can see the front tyres have all of a sudden got really shiny. Well, in order to achieve that surface finish, um, you can do it in two ways. You can either use some nail varnish over the top of the rubber, or I just use some super glue or cyanacrylate and just spread it round onto the tire, a couple of layers of that, and it hardens them off nicely. And they become all slippery and shiny so that because the front axle is not an independent axle, when those tires are rubbing on the track, they are not resisting the car turning or tipping into corners. They just slide across the track, yet they still provide support for the front of the car. So you tend to always have really shiny, hard front wheels, uh, unless you've got perhaps independent uh, front axles on your car. So I've done that to the front tyres. And then the rear tyres are true. These are just the standard tyres that came with the car. That I've given a bit of a true to. Um, they're okay as i say the rules don't allow me to glue them onto the hubs so they're not perfect they're a little bit distorted but they are actually round so we'll see how they go um so now it's time to put the guide in so i've got my guide here and i've got my little screw that's going to go with the guide so i'm hoping that i can put this in without the need for that spring and see how low we can go so let's do that you can see I've already put the braids into my guide. I uh, fold them over the top. So I should be able to slide that in. Put the screw in the top. It's a one and a half millimeter grub screw. Well, not grub screw, but Allen key. In the top there. And I should be able to start it off and it should bite and go down. Yes, it is. Run that all the way in. Now I need to assemble it so that the guide will move freely but not wobble. 
So you can see there is still a little bit of wobble in the guide there. So let's tighten it up that little bit more. All right, that's too tight. Back it off a touch. That's pretty good. I can feel the guide, actually the guide blade is fairly weak. It's bending quite a lot in my hand, even when I'm tightening this up. And I notice a couple of people in my comments have told me that they've actually managed to break this deeper guide. Um, it's quite weak. I mean, it is quite thin in the middle, I must admit, but I'll say that's the only one I've got, so we'll give it a go, but maybe I do need to uh, look at investing in some spares if they're likely to snap off and break. But I've managed to assemble it so that there's not too much sideways wobble in the guide. There is still a little bit, but I don't know what I can do about that because it's in, inside this aluminium post. And as I say, the screw is tightened down as hard as it can. I've removed any uh, flashings from the moulding of the guide. So that's probably about as good as I'm going to get. But it does move freely now. Right, so looking at the front of the car, I don't know whether you can see this. But if I were to push up on that guide, so hold the front axle down and push up on the guide, there is a little bit of movement there. Probably about just over half a millimetre of movement there. So, you know, it's possible that I might need a spacer under that guide. But I think for now I'm going to leave it like that because I don't know exactly how the track's going to be like in terms of the braid or the recess of the braid when I get there. So let's see, but I might need to put some sort of spacer under there. I mean, maybe even the spring that came with the guide might act as a bit of a spacer, but I don't really want a sprung-loaded guide and it lifting the front of the car off the deck. But the key thing is, is the front wheels are both on the deck and there is just that fraction of movement of the guide up and down. So I say I'm going to leave it like that, race it like that for now and see what happens. I've just put the wheels in place. It's probably time to have a quick look now at the body and see how does the body shell fit over the tyres and how does it fit on the chassis? Does it fit nice and squarely? So you might have noticed I've put these little rubber um, sort of covers or washers on. They slide over those screw posts, very nice. So I assume they're again gonna provide some damping between the chassis and the body shell. That should sit on top of the chassis. And then I can see roughly how does it how does it fit over the wheels and how does it sit onto that metal pan section. I'm looking to see how does it actually sit on the chassis? Is there enough wheel arch clearance? Well, there definitely is because there's virtually no front tire left. The back tires are taken down pretty small, so it looks like there's plenty of clearance around that arch on the back wheel. Um, also, have a look inside. Before you put the interior in, have a look inside and see how these rubber washers or rubber mounts, how do they sit onto that pan section? How does each one actually sit onto that pan section? Is there a gap underneath it? If there is, then I'm not quite sure what you could do about it, but I know people have the heated body shells in some hot water or boiling water and they can bend them slightly and twist them to straighten them up so that's maybe something you might consider or i've also seen people warm them up gently with a hair dryer and reshape a body shell but i'm not too sure whether that'll work or whether i'll make a mess of that so i think i'm quite lucky uh, or maybe it's just good quality from revo slot but all four body mounting posts seem to sit nicely on the pan section with no gaps in between, which is really nice, because what I don't want to do is put that onto the pan section, tighten up my screws underneath and start twisting the pan section or bending the body shell because I'm tightening it up onto that pan section and twisting it. So it's nice if those four posts sit perfectly on those pans, I say, and don't have any sort of gaps or any wobble of the body shell. You, know, you could also try, a bit like I did with the chassis, you could try pressing just above each one of those four body mounting posts and see does the body rock from side to side. Well this one doesn't, so as I say I'm, I'm quite happy that I think that body shell is going to fit okay. 
So it's nearly getting close to having to put a colour on this shell because I've got to race it very soon. Something I've got to decide, I've got three wings here. I suppose the experts amongst you will be able to tell exactly which wing ran with what car in what year in what championship. Um, but I don't really follow this kind of racing. Um, so I'm going to choose a wing based on practicality at a slot race meeting. So I'm going to choose the smallest wing possible because I don't think downforce is an issue with these kind of cars. They're not going to be going fast enough. And a smaller wing is less likely to catch on Marshall's hands or other cars or the barrier if you have an accident. So it's less likely to get knocked off. It's also less weight high up on the car. So that's why I am choosing the smallest wing possible to put on the shell. It also comes with things like little light inserts. Um, there's a light bar which goes along the back. There's windows, etc. But I probably don't need to put any of those in until I've sprayed the body shell. Although I am thinking that maybe I want to leave this bit white, which is going to be behind the lights. Um, I'll have to look at a picture of a real car and see what do the lights actually look like on the back of it. Um, and again, these bits here, are they orange? Are they white? I don't know on the real car. Uh, so I'll have a quick look and then see if I need to mask those areas off before I spray the body shell a colour. So thank you for watching again. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click, click the big Cleave Tech button that comes up on the screen. Um, next time I see you, we'll be looking at what colour the car actually is. So, can't wait. See you soon.